Well, remember that rusted out hulk of a coin door on the video trivia table? Yeah, so do I. Well, it's gone. <laughs> I gave up on it. I picked this up. This is a uh, this is a coin mac door with the acceptors or with the mechanisms, but no acceptors um, and a wiring harness that doesn't work with this machine. What I'm hoping to do is mount this up to the uh, table. I'm going to take the frame off and everything. Besides, this door will not fit that frame. It, it's a different size. But I have some concerns. Chiefly, I don't think it's going to fit the frame or the opening. I may have to modify the opening, possibly with a router that I don't have, and um, and that'll be bad. So what I gotta do is uh, open this sucker up and dismount the old door frame. Now how the door frame rusted out, for those of you who aren't paying attention, um, this machine was sitting in a barn for many many years and uh, it suffered greatly. Luckily, the only thing to be damaged was the coin door. It could have been much worse. Much, much worse. But it wasn't, and that's good. So, once I get the door fitted, I already got the carriage bolts and everything, just in case it fits. So here we are, all wide open. <laughs> Say ah. <laughs> and we're going to try to take this... Uh, beat up door frame off. Right. So the old door frame was held on by cleats and uh, the new one uses carriage bolts. So that's modification number one if it's even doable. I'm gonna have to um, drill some holes in the cabinet. So let's see if this sucker fits. If it fits, then I can drill my holes and life will be grand. If it doesn't fit, well, then I got a problem. Now, it doesn't fit height-wise, um, but it wouldn't take much to, uh, to make it fit. So the height is wrong. The width is wrong, <laughs> Jesus, but <laughs> it, it certainly is doable. Um, bring the camera over here so you can see what I'm seeing. The, uh, the lip is too tall. Well, I wasn't about to uh, wait another day to get this door mounted, so I took out my crosscut saw and I just ate away at the uh, lip of the door frame. It's not the best, but it works. Woo. Now, all I need to do, well, actually, I'm gonna put a coat of black paint on this door frame, make it look a little nicer. And uh, got some black semi-gloss, that'll work nice. Clean it up, put a coated paint on it, make it look beautiful. And then we're going to proceed to uh, start drilling in some holes. Actually, I'm going to mark off where the holes are going to be now. And that way I can just, you know, kind of do it. It's unfortunate that <clears throat> side to side we're a little off, but it could be much worse. So I, I think we'll be okay. Why is that phone always ring when I'm making videos? Okay, so I've got all my holes drilled. It wasn't really an important phone call anyway. So these uh, carriage bolts are going to be holding the door in place. 
my door frame. And they fit everywhere, all the way around the core of the perimeter. Just fine. So, we'll get that, uh... Arr! Yeah. Yeah, so we'll get that all fixed up. There we go. I had to remove this uh, switch here. I mistakenly drilled through it. Whoops. Um... <laughs> That's okay. We're gonna just uh, remove it anyway. It's just a <clears throat> unnecessary feature. What I'm gonna do is jump leads right off of where the switch used to be. So this is all gonna come out. Um, and this switch has to be moved. So we gotta move that switch. One of the most important things we need to do now is remove all the old wiring and uh, start fitting this door um, to work with this game, which is all doable. I have some coin mechanisms I'm going to be able to pop into, into these units. Hopefully they'll work. I think they will. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I'll be able to use the counter. <laughs> the game isn't really rigged for one, so... Yeah, that's going to be fun. Um, so, yep, all this has to come apart to make this doable. So now the door is mounted in place. I just did some cleaning here. Clean the door up a little bit. I am probably going to shoot a coat of paint on it once I get it all squared away. So we got to take the old wiring harness and replace this catastrophe in a bag. Um, it doesn't obviously have the same pin out as the original one did. Not that it was going to. It would be nice. But no, not going to happen. Not today. Let's see, let's do something about that. Let's start by picking off all the old leads. Pretty simple. I mean, these doors are wired, I mean, very simply. Um, you've got a lot of unnecessary parts here, stuff that doesn't really apply to this machine. Like this box here. You know, that that's... That's all coming out. I could have removed all that. None of this wiring is of any use to me. The old counter box, can't use that. Um, if I could figure out a way to make it work, I would. But I just need a, I think I need like a 12 volt pulse when a coin's dropped in and that'll trigger the counter. But Anyway, let me work on that for a little bit. So we've got all the wiring off. Here's the wiring loom that we need to use. And uh, just to reiterate with, to you guys, um, these are the lockout coils. And from the looks of it, these were disabled previously uh, for some reason. <laughs> this one's disabled so it cannot be in the lockout position. This one. And that's a very old wire uh, uh, zip tie. Check that out. Looks like looks like a film roll. That's a very old. Those are like early '80s. Um, this one hasn't been strapped out like that, but it is missing the spring that belongs there. So, didn't really all that important anyway. Um, I'm told that this machine came out of a, I think you said it was a midway cabinet. This right here is irrelevant to this machine, but this is actually a, I, um, I call this a tilt sensor. If somebody tries to get money out of the machine, this disables it. But we're not using that anyway, so. Or if they slam the door, it, it kicks. That's what that's all about. And, uh, so yeah, it's all there. I'm going to take this off. So I was able to bend this tab down. See, it was vertical originally. I bent it downward so that I could slide the original bulb mounts back on without using the, um, the rather loose and rickety bulb holders. I think that 
It may have been designed to work this way. I, I, I don't know. I'm just not really sure about that. But just like bend it down. Boom. And these bulbs, bulb holders, will slide right in. Just like that. And you don't even get in the way of the buttons. That's pretty cool. I like that. Got my ground wire done. Wrapped up, retied up here. Loom is tied up there and there. The bulbs are in place. Working our way down to the lockout coils. Now, to, to do this right, what I'm going to have to do is um, take these spade connectors off and uh, replace them or simply solder the wires directly to the coils. I might just do that instead. Now, working our way down here, what do I see? <laughs> but a small sleigh and eight tiny reindeer, or a really crappy wiring job. I don't know what was done over here and why, but they spliced the two coin mechanism uh, triggers together and then teed off of there. Why the hell? Uh, whatever. I'm going to take this all apart and, and I'm going to lengthen this. This wire now has to be lengthened to make this work. Ay, just a mess. i got to fix that. No, oh, here's one of the old light bulb housings. Really sloppy. So um, we're going to fix that now. But so far things are looking pretty good. Not bad for a free door. <laughs> Pays to have friends, it really does. <laughs> Randy, if you're watching this video, thank you very much. Um, so yeah, that's coming together nicely. Okay, we're done. At least with the coin door. So I've got each switch wired in. I've had to extend these leads on both sides. Ran out of shrink tubing, so I had to use duct tape to... Or, Wire, electrical tape to conceal the solder joint. Um, I could reconfigure some things here. I've got two still good uh, coin controls uh, mechanisms, and they both appear to work. Uh, this one on the on the uh, left side is a bit flaky, but one on the right seems to trigger pretty consistently. So let's give it a try. The coin should fall out the bottom here. And it didn't do it. They both need to be taken apart and given a good... There it goes. Good. They need to be cleaned pretty thoroughly. Um, that's what they truly need. But they both just triggered, so that's good. You have to give it a bit of a spin. Give it some mem uh, momentum. Oh, wait. Switch is getting interference from the wire, I think. It sticks. This one's good. And this is how we get past our lockout switch. What I've done is I've taken the cable out that went to the switch, shortened it, and we're just going to use it as a jumper. It's a good thing this happened, because check this out. The, um, <laughs> these, oh my lord, <laughs> these were carrying all the power to the machine. Look at that. Yucky. Those are ready to go, and that could have um, been a fire hazard. So, we're going to reduce that down to this. So it comes off the switch, those two terminals, and then it goes down to these two terminals where the switch or the fuse block is originally that cable went around to the front and then back so problem solved i got goosebumps got goosebumps okay we have signs of life screen's coming up here goes the fan See what's gonna happen.
when these lights come on, me know something went right. And they didn't. Now it's going crazy. Okay, let's double check our wiring. Hmm. Got me wondering what could have gone wrong. it up. Double check a few things. Something isn't right. Whatever that something happens to be, we have to figure it out. Um, hmm. Okay. Possible, possible problem. Okay. If one of these coils is shorted out, we would have a problem big problem. Now there's diodes on each one. So let's do this. We're going to lift the leg off of one of those coils. And to do that we need to warm up Mr. Soldering Iron. Okay. We're going to lift the leg on both of them. Just to see. Now I could hear that circuit lighting up or, or energizing. The relay that energizes it was kicking on, so it tells me there might be a possible short. And if there is a short, it'll be in one of these coils. Because we really don't know what the condition of those was before. Okay, so here's the deal. The resistance was too low on these two coils and it blew something out. Don't know what. These are about four and a half ohms each. The original ones were good for I think I've uh, like 30 ohms. So there's the problem. And okay as you can clearly see we have lighting which means we have power. I have identified a couple of issues. Number one Turn the music down. I was going through all these schematics here, and uh, I uh, traced a few things down to where they needed to be, and um, if that makes any sense at all. So here's what we've done. So we know why the problem occurred in the first place, because these coils have such a high, or I'm sorry, a low resistance. They're possibly shorted internally. Don't really know the answer to that yet, um, but they're good for about. Oh, I think I was getting somewhere along the lines of um, about three or four ohms. So they're junk. No good. The coils that came with the machine originally were good for about 35 ohms each. And uh, so there's that problem. So we have such a high load on that circuit that it blew something up. In diagnosing that problem, I found that my ground lead, my, my chassis ground, was putting out something like 20 volts of what could have been AC current. I don't have the right multimeter to determine that, but I believe it was AC current. And that was a problem. <laughs> it was causing a lot of issues. I couldn't really diagnose my root problem when I had a ground wire that was putting out. And, and not only that, but if I touched the, the chassis, I would get electrocuted. So that's a problem. I traced the grounding issue down to the AC filter down here. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, as you can see, I removed the ground wire. That filter has to be replaced. I believe there's a short somewhere inside that filter. So that's got to go. That's not good. So right now, I can touch this to my heart's content and not get shocked. But on the other side of that, we don't have a chassis ground anymore. That problem is addressed. We know what to do to fix it. Now that the lights work, I'll explain how I fixed that. Because I wanted to make this as close to factory original as far as electrically as possible, I have returned the original coils to these coin mechs, but they're actually dummy coils at this point. They're not really doing anything. They're sucking up power. That's it. 
they're not necessary at this point now that I've diagnosed the problem, but I'm going to just leave them there anyway. Um, because they don't really mount to these uh, acceptors, I had to zip tie them in place. They're actually mounted in backwards, and they should be magnetized. Well, maybe not. Yeah, okay, not very well. There's not really a lot of magnetism coming off this thing. But, yes, they're magnetized. Um, that being said, they're zip tied in place, they are backwards, and um, they're not just, they're just not doing anything at all. They're pretty much just sitting there, sucking up power and completing circuits. Um, <laughs> no, not really. But that's all they're doing right now. Um, so I'm going to put this coin mech back in place. Um, oh yes, what happened? Why did the lighting suddenly go dark and we lost power to this circuit? Okay, as you probably have figured out, this circuit powers up after the game does the self-diagnostic. Which means that the logic board itself comes into play somehow. I traced the wiring using this schematic, which is nice to have, believe me. And I found that the, um, the coin mech lockout coils and the lighting is powered off the same circuit. And uh, that circuit comes off of this pin on the motherboard. Now, okay, it's actually coming off of the red wire. I found that the orange wire which puts out 12 volts is um, is live and well. It's actually putting out about 15 volts. And that's coming right off the power supply. That was good. So well, that leaves us with the motherboard. Um, now because of this circuitry is so crude and simple, we can then trace our red wires, we have two of them, one for each side, down to these controller chips. These are actually, um, oh, what the hell are they? Hold on. Okay, these, <clears throat> excuse me, these are actually called high voltage, high current Darlington transistors. Now that I know the transistors, I can tell you what they do. Power is supplied um, through logic to, say, this pin here, which then sends high current, or it's low current, and then high current comes in and powers up the other side of it. One of these three is bad. I don't know which one, I haven't really gone that far to figure it out. But, one of these is blown. Because of our coil disaster. So, I went ahead and popped all three off of the old motherboard that I've got right there. And I just popped them on to the, to the one I'm using. So instead of wasting time flipping chips, I said, screw it, let's just do all three. And um, I don't, I actually could just easily figure out which one is bad just by looking at the board, but what the hell. I put them all in there, done. Problem solved. So we're back to uh, full functionality. Next thing I've got to do is replace that, fault, that uh, line filter, and uh, we should be good to go electrically. Um, I am then going to straighten out the wiring. I'm done for tonight. It is nearly, it's actually past 10 o'clock. So I am done for tonight. I am done. Okay. So, are you guys ready to see the finished product? It's all done. The coin door, that is. The whole coin door project is completed, and uh, I have a few things I'm going to do next. The next thing I'm going to do is restore the control panels. may not be a proper restoration, because I have an idea that's a little bit different from the original appearance. But without further ado, I'm going to show you the rear of the coin door, coin door first. Ooh, all nice and bolted in. Look at that. Nice, clean wiring. Exactly what Mother Nature intended. Now for the front of the coin door. And and I'm really happy with the way this came out because it actually looks half decent. Look at that. Alright. Camera doesn't do it any good any justice, but I repainted the whole door with a gloss engine paint. 
so it's durable once it fully cures. And I finished bolting it in place so everything is nice and tight and snug. And here we go. I had the whole mechanism apart. I try to lightly clean up the back of the coin door, but no one's really ever going to see that anyway. Um, I, repl I found that I had yet another one of these um, coin mechanisms from the same manufacturer, Coin Mech Incorporated. So I took the troublesome one out and I put in a good one. So that's nice. So let's pop in a quarter. Took that one. Let's try the other one. And I took that one. So we have two credits. So we can do one or two players. Let's do one. <coughs> okay, fine. I know you guys have been wanting to see this. So here we go. We're going to finally do category number four. Why did Oedipus blind himself? Oedipus. I think that's pronounced Oedipus. Uh, I don't know. Um, heh. These are all funny. No, the correct answer is he married his mother. Okay, good old Oedipus. What did you do? Why would you marry your mother? Okay. Is she hot? Which of the following is noted for being one of history's most active lovers? I think the answer was Catherine the Great. That's why she was so great. Yay! I have 600 points. The shelling of the lymph glands in the groin, flu-like illness and blisters, are usually the first attack signs of... Oh, swelling of the... Okay. I think... It might be syphilis. No, it's herpes. Huh. Oh, I lost all my points. What actress won an Oscar in 1960 portraying a prostitute in the film Butterfield 8? Liz Taylor? Yep. Okay. Second game, I lost. Okay. General trivia. What instrument does Donny, Johnny Carson play? I believe he plays the clarinet. No, it's drums. Oh. I don't know anything. <laughs> I don't know anything. <laughs> what president introduced the win button? I'm gonna wager. Oh, damn. Let's let's see. Uh, the uh, must have been Nixon. Ford. Yay, President Ford. Who would have known? Obama introduced the like button. Hey. <laughs> yeah, right. Who starred in the film The Gene Krupa Story? I actually know who Gene Krupa is. He's a famous drummer. Um, but I don't know who played him. Let's try... Uh, Salmineo. I have 61,000 points. What is the first book of the Bible? Oh, I know that one. Oops. It's actually Genesis. 6,300 points. Bonus questions for experts. Oh, never mind. That's it. That was it. 
That is what 25 cents would buy you in 1984. 25 cents buys you a couple of questions that you have no way of knowing the answers of. <laughs> oh man. I'm glad she's working though. That's a good thing. So the next thing we need to do is fix these control panels. They look like ass. I want to fix them. I'm not sure what I want to do. I mean, the easiest thing to do, obviously, would be to restore them to their factory appearance, and that is to take some um, body filler and kind of fill in where the laminate had chipped off, and then give them a nice coat of flat black paint. That would be the easiest solution. But I actually have a theory. I'm well, not a theory, but an idea. I want to coat them with vinyl, like padded vinyl. That's what I want to do with these control panels. It's not going to be easy because of the odd shape. I'd have to actually whip out the sewing machine and actually sew the damn things, and I don't want to do that. So, I don't know. We'll have to, we'll have to rethink that. So, coming soon to a theater near you. Will he do it, or will he won't? Will he won't? That doesn't make sense. What the 